Hi, welcome back to another video about Cadence and this video is the start of a series. In the series, we will start to use a MOSFET in a configuration as an amplifier. And the configuration that we, we will analyze today, very simple um, configuration of the MOSFET used at Amplify, which is the common source configuration with resistive drain. What does it mean, common source? So if you look at this symbol of the MOSFET, and when we look at this symbol, we know that it a N-channel MOSFET. Looking at the arrow, if the arrow pointing from uh, the from here, you can see like uh, let's say bulk or uh, from the gate towards outside, outside, outside of the bulk or the gate then we will say that that's the end channel and in another case when we see the symbol of a PMOS then I will indicate that it's a PMOS but when we look at this symbol just remember it's an end MOS it's an end channel MOSFET so simply call it end MOS so with this end MOS we can identify which is the drain, the source, and the gate. So, of course, here we know that this is the gate. And because of this symbol, we know that this MOSFET is an end channel. And because it's an end channel, this position will be the drain of the MOS. And at this position will be the source of the MOS. I indicate the position of the source of the MOS in order to explain why do we call this configura configuration is common source? Common source means the source is connected to the ground. The source is connected to an AC ground. So in this case, you can see that the source connected directly to a ground, not even an AC ground, it a DC ground. So if it's connected to a DC ground, in the small signal analysis, for sure, this point is also an AC ground. And because the source is connected to a ground, an AC ground or a DC ground, so we call the configuration as a common source. And in the common source configuration, we usually have the input at the gate and the output at the drain. So you can see the output is at the drain of the NMOS and the input is at the gate of the NMOS. Of course, here I just uh, have not indicated about the input, the small small input, and we will start with that in the next video of this series. But in this series, we just somehow got the idea of what does it mean common source, what does it mean resistive drain, and we'll start to solve a very simple problem related to this configuration of the MOS used at the amplifier. Okay. So we understand what does it mean common source. Next, what does it mean resistive drain? So here you can see this is the drain position of the end mods and the drain is connected to a resistor and the resistor is a resistive component. So we call it resistive drain. That's simple. And um, according, to according to this configuration, we usually have such a problem. And the problem usually consists of two parts. The first part is related to bias or DC bias or we can have another equivalent termination which is quiescent condition. So again, the first problem usually related to the MOS used in amplifier configuration is bias or DC bias or quiescent condition. So the first problem in this case, we need to find the width of this N mods and also the external component. In this case, the external component is the value of this resistor because all of the rest of the external means any components besides the MOS is called external component already determined. So we have this 
DC voltage source determined and also this DC voltage source also determined. The only component in the external circuit which is not determined is the resistor and uh, the width of the NMOS. The, the width of the NMOS is not called external because it's the internal characteristic of the MOS itself. So we just say the width of the NMOS. And the second problem, after we solve the first problem, the second problem related to the small signal analysis. And with the small signal analysis, in this series we only calculate the circuit gain of the of this amplifier. So in the amplifier, usually we are interested in the gain of the amplifier. So when we calculate the gain of this circuit, we will calculate the gain of the amplifier. So that's the introduction of the problem we will solve today. And um, But in this video, I will just solve the first problem and then we go to the simulation in cadence in order to check our calculation. So now let's go to the first problem where we have to determine the bias, the DC bias or the quiescent condition. And look at here. We see that we need to find the width of the mass, the internal characteristic of the mass, and the external component, which is the value of the resistor, so that we can meet this DC bias condition. And the condition is given in two terms. The first term is that we need to have the ID equal to 100 microampere. What does it mean, ID? ID usually means the drain current has the value the DC drain current, or we can say like the quiescent drain current, equal to 100 microampere. And the next DC bias condition that we need to meet is the drain voltage equal to 0 0.6 volt. The drain voltage equal to 0 0.6, or the VD equal to 0 0.6 volt means the voltage at this point, the DC voltage of this point should be 0 0.6 volt and so the uh, DC bias condition again is given in two terms the first term is the DC bias current drain current equal to 100 microampere and the second term is that the DC or the bias voltage drain voltage VD equal to 0 0.6 volt and uh, further information for our calculation, those values should be dependent on the model of the MOS that you use in your simulation. It doesn't mean that those values are always true, but you need to check, for example, the value of this one, the value of L, the value of VOV, those are dependent on the model of the mass that you used in your simulation. So please check the equivalent value out before you calculate things. And of course, because uh, we already have the model, so we can extract the values. And let's have some brief explanation about those value. This value is the product between the mobility of the electron in the channel of the mass and the COX, COX means the oxide capacitance at the the oxide layer between the gate and the mass. L is the channel length of the mass and the VOV is the overdrive voltage which will be more explained in detail when we do the calculation. VDD we usually call supply voltage or the DC supply voltage. You can see from here VDD is the DC supply voltage equal to 1.8 volt. And VG means the DC voltage at the gate, the 0 0.6 volt. This VG, in the, in, the, in the introduction I said we have the input at the gate but the VG here is only for DC bias. It's not really the small signal input, so please just put in mind at the moment we only solving things related to the DC bias condition, not yet 
related to anything of the small signal analysis. Put it in your mind until we go to the second video of this series. Okay, now let's move on after we introduce our problem of the DC bias condition. With the given problem, we need to solve first is the width and the second is the value of the resistor. So to find the width of the mass, again, we have the mass used as the amplifier. And when mass used as the amplifier, usually we want to operate the mass in the saturation region. There are many regions of the mass can operate. If you want to know more about the details, we prefer to the videos links or the book and the references in my video description, in this video description. In this case, I will only say the critical point that we need to pay attention to so we can do the calculation. So the critical point is that when we use the MOS as an amplifier, the MOS should be in saturation. And because the MOS is in saturation, we need to use the very textbook, let's say, Swear Law model or Swear Law equation or the equation of the mass when the mass is in saturation region is this equation. You can see this equation is related to almost every parameters that are given to us. Those parameter, those parameter, and those parameter given to us, and even the drain, even the drain current. So this is our drain current mobility outside capacitance, the width that we need to find, the length, and the difference between the gate source voltage and the threshold voltage. So um, the threshold voltage, we don't need to care actually, in this case, beca because we are given with the overdrive voltage. And overdrive voltage usually is defined as the difference between the gate source voltage and the threshold voltage. So that's why here we just need to look at it as one parameter, which is the VOV, overdrive voltage, equal to 0 0.2 volt. So to find the width, because all of the rest of the parameters are given, so for sure we can find out the width of the mass. And second is the value of the resistor. And the value of the resistor, we just need to use Ohm law, which is the voltage drop on the resistor over the current going through the resistor. And if we look at here, our resistor here. For the voltage drop on the resistor, we just need to take the difference between the two, the difference of the voltage between the two terminals of the resistor. So at this terminal, we got the voltage of 1.8 volt, you can see here. And this one, because we say we want to have the DC condition at drain voltage equal to 0 0.6, it means at this point, the voltage is 0 0.6. So the difference is VDD minus VD. And the uh, current going through the resistor, in this case, you can see it's pretty straightforward, which is the current going from here and then it goes directly into the drain of the MOS. So it means the DC drain current going to the drain of the MOS is also the current going through our resistor. So that's why the current going through our resistor is also the DC drain current ID. And all of the parameters in this formula are also given, so we can easily calculate them. Okay, one small detail. Uh, the detail here is VGS. What does it mean VGS? VGS is the difference between the VG minus the VS. We usually call VGS mean gate source voltage. So VGS is the difference between the gate voltage and the source voltage. To, for example, if you got the DC gate voltage of the MOS here and the DC source voltage of the MOS here, VGS is the VG minus the VS. That's it. Okay, a uh, few more information. So NF usually means the number of finger of the uh, MOS, uh, the number of finger related to the layout of the MOS, so in this case we don't care much. And the M usually means the multiplier, multiplier equal to 1, it means here we have only one MOS, 
But if the multiplier is equal to 2, it means we have two mods connected somehow in parallel. Uh, what does it mean, mods connected to in parallel? It means we have another mod here, and the drain of the second mod is connected to the drain of the first mod. The gate is connected to the gate. The source is connected to the source. So that's parallel mods. But at the moment, to make it simple, we just say multiplier equal to 1, number of finger equal to 1, so everything is simple and standard. We have only one mask, we have only one finger in the layout, and that's it. Now we can start to use some programming language or very uh, primitive way to calculate the value of the width and the resistor is to use the paper and pen or you can use C programming in VS Code or you can use C programming in v VS like Visual Studio Code or you can use Python and I will use Python to calculate our width and our resistor so now let's go to the calculation okay I use Python in Google Collab so now let's uh, just run the code, just import some library for running and these are the parameters that we are given here okay, uh, VDS just, just the ID, sorry IDS means the ID, the drain current, the DC drain current we are given here 100 microampere and uh, UCOx means the product between the uh, mobility of the electrons and the oxide capacitance L is L here and VOV is VOV here and uh, next we will have the uh, formula to calculate our width of course this is just a um, mathematical transformation everybody can do that from this equation and we can run and then we print out the value of the width of course I make some unit conversion so the value that we are reading here is in the unit of micro ohm. So um, with this formula, with all of the given parameters, we can calculate that we need the width for our n mass around like 12.69 micro ohm, and for the resistor, for the resistor here, uh, the formula is exactly just copy paste. So we have the VDD, which is the supply voltage. If you look in the schematic, if you look in the schematic moment, if you look in the schematic here, the VDD is connected to a VDC or the DC voltage source, and the value is 1.8. So that's why we have VDD equal to 1.8. And of course, this is given. This is the given value. So we don't question why we have the 1.8 here and next we we have the uh, VD equal to 0 0.6 is also a given the voltage here is also given so we don't question uh, and then after that we can calculate our resistor with a formula and we can print out we can calculate first and we print out the value of our resistor and the unit we don't have any unit here because everything is standard unit the VDD is volt, VDD is also volt and the IDS is ampere so that's why the unit of the resistor here should be ohm so it means 12 kilo ohm now we have all of the value of the width and the resistor uh, to complete this circuit so we can meet the DC bias condition here now let's go to cadence and check it out the simulation check it out our calculation to see whether um, we got the correct one okay now this is our simulation part where we will start to um, check our um, calculation and because of some confidence confidential information so we cannot I cannot really reveal what is the model I'm using but at this moment you know that um, I already set the width to be the value that we calculated and also the length to be the value that we are given with so I set the length to be 1 micro ohm 
if you want to check and you have cadence and you have another model you can use it you can use your model and you can set the value calculated according to what I've according to the step that I demonstrated earlier doesn't need to be exactly the same value with my calculation this is just for me to demonstrate the steps how we can analyze the problem how we can calculate and we can check our calculation so again uh, I already set the length of this and mass to be 1 micro ohm and also the width to be the 12.69 micro sorry 1 micrometer and the width to be 12.69 micrometer as we calculated earlier and also for the resistor I set it to be 12 kilo ohm and all of the rest of the configuration is the same with what I demonstrate in the presentation so now we can just save our circuit or let, let's see what is the warning we can go to the warning here it is say that um, floating net uh, floating net it means here is floating it's totally fine because uh, it's an open so it's floating it's fine we, I just put this wiring here in order to prop the V out so V out in our case will care when we talk about small signal analysis here the V out is actually the drain voltage of our mass we now can start to do the simulation and if you want to know how to do the simulation in cadence of a circuit like AC simulation, DC simulation, transient simulation please refer to my previous videos which I also put in this video description here I will just go with the step and I do with the for the explanation so we need to uh, have the uh, natural file to do the simulation okay and then we need to add our test from the schematic and we need to add our DC analysis of course we need to save our DC operating point DC because we are doing the DC analysis we calculate the value of the width the internal characteristic of the mass and also the value of the external component which is the resistor in order to uh, put our mass in the DC operating operation point so we of course when we do the DC analysis we need to save the DC operating point and we click OK and then we go back to the another perspective of our mesh profile here we will start to input some signal and um, let's say the signal we are interested in is the drain voltage which is the V out we have to save it and uh, I think that's the only signal that we are interested in of course there's another signal which is we need to check is the which is the drain current the DC drain current in this case however we can only prop out that value after we do the first simulation so within the first simulation we can only check the I can name it the VD the VD or the drain voltage or the DC drain voltage of our MOS so now let's run it and wait to see how much is it okay we can plot it it will be just a, a dot of course it's just a dot so the drain voltage is around like uh, 757 millivolt which is roughly like 0.75 volt it's a little bit far away from 0.6 volt a little bit far away but maybe it's acceptable in some case if you have some um, error percentage not too small okay now how can we prop out the uh, drain current we use calculator of course if you want to know how to use the calculator please refer to my previous video I put that video in my description and we need to choose OAP OP mean operation point and the component we are interested in is this MOS, the end MOS here and we go back and we choose ID here ID is here and then we output to our mesh profile we go to output setup here we got it so we put it ID we name it ID because it's actually the ID and we run the simulation again and we check the current okay 
So we achieved the current around like 86 microampere, very close to 100 microampere, the error roughly less than 20%. So not too bad. So our calculation, not too exact, but it's not too bad. And I think that's the, oh, we can maybe print out this, those value to our schematic, we choose print right click in the value and we choose print and we say DC operating point and maybe we will click here could be? no oh, we will click here yeah we print it out and it print out all of the value related to our mass when we do such a um, DC analysis we can see our ID from here I guess ID yeah 86.88 microampere Okay, so that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and wait for the second video in this series so we can solve the small signal analysis related to the same circuit. Goodbye, see you in the next video of the series.